Cole Whitney is the new pitcher for Georgia Southern, senior right-hander out of Campbell Hall, New York. Whitney making his second appearance of the tournament, and for the season, he's been one of their top relievers, five and three, making his 28th appearance, got six saves and a 2.96 ERA. It's got a report on him, his fastball upper 80 with some pretty good run on that. It's got a slider and a splitter too. That's pretty good, that's his out pitch and he's got a change up as well. And you may have noticed him kind of writing in the dirt there. He writes Gigi on the mound before every inning for his grandmother out there. And I saw him do that right before that first warm up pitch. Very nice sweet. tribute to her. Whitney threw 38 pitches in Georgia Southern's victory against Little Rock on Thursday. He went the final three and two thirds in that ball game and got the save, allowing two runs on six hits with five strikeouts and just a couple of walks. So he comes in facing Nick Lucky here with one down in the inning and a run already in after the home run by McKeon. Matt, I was telling a story you know, about Scott McKeon and all the time he's had to play this year and his body wearing down and you know, it's a gutty guy in a performance that he's been able to hang in there all year. He's one of those guys that hasn't been injured for this team. And, you know, fighting through all of this and adversity of having to play every day, it's not an easy thing and adjusting to that and trying to get up his strength. So he'll look forward to the fall and the summer to get stronger and stronger. He's just going to be a better and better player. Batted 400 for the Chanticleers. The first 20 games of the season came in to this game at uh, 338 so saw his average drop about 60 points as the season went on you're right they lost their depth on the left side of the infield with keaton weiss their third baseman going down then nick lucky as we mentioned missed about half the season with injury as well so that put mckeon in a spot where he had to play every inning of every game Two two pitch called strike three. So Whitney comes in and gets a strikeout of Lucky. And now two down here in the seventh. No argument by Lucky. You recognize the strike there, just turned and walked back to the dugout. Still within striking distance for Georgia Southern right now. Two runs, nothing. They put five on the board against Veneziano in that second inning. This is a team that can score in bunches too, and they did it all through the month of May. 10 plus runs scored in multiple games in the month of May. Record setting offensive tournament here. You see Coastal with 18 home runs in this tournament. They have obliterated the record book here hosting this tournament at Springsbrook Stadium. And they are closing in on their second straight Sun Belt Championship and trip to the NCAA tournament. Georgia Southern still with three trips to the plate to try to do something about it. And remember, Georgia Southern is the home team in this game, so they will get the final at bat. Coastal gunning for their 17th NCAA regional and their 11th in the last 13 years and 16 of the last 19 years along the way in all those berths. Most of them came as the champions of the Big South and then last year as the Sun Belt Conference, but in 05, 13, and 15, they got at-large berths. Played in three Super Regionals in their history. They lost at North Carolina in 2008. Lost to South Carolina at Pelicans Park in 2010. And then won at LSU in 2016 to win a spot in the College World Series and ultimately win the national championship that year as Wood draws the walk with two out in the inning. And here is Keaton Rivers. Rivers making a late 
Sunday run for most outstanding player <laughs> yes. of the tournament honors. He's now at four home runs. And while Beerman did hit three run home runs on Friday night to get the five, Beerman has been quiet in this final with three strikeouts. Rivers might be, make a big final round push and catch him. He's working on it. We're on the back nine now. I know you never got in your nine that you were looking for this week because <laughs> we had some long days here at the tournament. Well, you'll get your nine in tomorrow, right? Yes. Back home in West Virginia. Down the line, fair ball, foul ball, pardon me. Called foul by Ken Langford standing right there on the third base line. That was foul. Wasn't even close. You sure? Yeah. <laughs> Langford was sure. Count 0 and 1 to Rivers. Bouncer to Evans, throws and got him. And the inning comes to a close. And Cole Whitney's job out there on the mound is to hold, hold Coastal right where they are and give the Eagles bats a chance to rally here in the final six outs for them. It's looking back at the numbers of the three games that these teams met back in April on April 18th and they played a double header on the 20th. The scores in those games, Georgia Southern won the first one nine to two. It was Coastal Carolina taking the second game, same score as this right here at nine to seven. And Georgia Southern took the final game of the three, 13 to 12. So these teams are used to high scoring games. So no surprise today that those numbers on the board are approaching 10 again. And no big surprise that as the series went on, each game the total run total kept getting higher and higher. higher yes. <laughs> Top of the eighth inning, and here's Jake Wright. Ball one to Jake Wright. Pretty quiet day for him in this championship final thus far. Walked and scored in the sixth inning on that double by skills, however, that put Coastal on top for the first time today. Other than that, a couple of strikeouts for him. Wright is 22 for 25 in the tournament. Or 12 for, that would have been incredible. 12 for 25 in the tournament. Batting 480. That's still pretty incredible. One hopper to Curry, and one out here in the eighth. And here's Zach Bierman. Is he due? He hasn't homered since he hit three out on Friday. Guess what they keep feeding him? Breaking ball. Yes, a bunch of trash up there having him trying to go after it. They may try to throw a fastball, but they're not going to throw it into place or shouldn't unless they miss where he can do that with it. Foul ball. Don't know if that was a mistake by Cole Whitney. That was an 88 mile an hour fastball inside. I don't know if it was supposed to be further inside, but too close 
for comfort. Curry again, two outs in the inning. Just beat it into the ground and easy play for Curry. John and I working on our ballot up here for the old tournament team. Man, it's tough. <laughs> Scratching names out, writing names in. Yeah. So many great players deserving. Dick, this game is a big, dictates a lot of that. Yeah, exactly. This is the championship final. You know, and what you do in this game has a big bearing. I mean, all the games are important. Mm-hmm. But you get to the last one. Championship game, what you remember for. No balls and two strikes here to Skeels. High chopper. Whitney waits for it and throws, didn't get him. So Skeels <laughs> with an infield. Chopper, a Conway chopper right off the plate. Yeah, that's the new name for it. We took away Baltimore, the Conway chopper. That's about the fourth time we've seen that in this tournament. Just beat it down into the ground. And here's Parker Chavers. With another man on for Coastal, Eagles cannot afford to let the Chanticleers, the Chanticleers score any more runs. As it is, the two-run deficit is going to be tough enough to make up. Gets away from Avant. That's a wild pitch from Whitney. And Skills is now at second base. And that's where a base hit from Shavers would make it a 10 7 game. Run scoring has slowed down quite a bit. So now you're talking insurance runs. Coastal has scored in each of the last four innings. But Georgia, uh, Georgia Southern has not scored since the fourth. After scoreless in the first three, Coastal three runs in the fourth, one in the fifth, four in the sixth, and one more in the seventh. Eagles scored one in the first, five in the second, and then one in the fourth. 2-1 pitch, fouled off, 2-2. Two and two. You think about baseball and where it starts. They begin playing in mid-February sometimes. Temperatures near freezing. Mm -hmm. And you wrap it up here on Memorial Day weekend, at least the regular season before the NCAA tournament and temperatures in the hundreds. Right at it. Called strike three, and that'll do it. Whitney gets the strikeout to put the Chanticleers to bed here in the top of the eighth. We go to the bottom half. Coastal on top. It's 9-7. Head to the top of the ninth, and Coastal looking to add to their 9-7 lead here in the Sun Belt Championship game. Whitney on the mound for the Eagles. McKeon with a homer his last time up. Ball one. 
Coastal trying to become the first team since Louisiana back in 2015 to lose their first game in the tournament and come back through the loser's bracket and win the championship. Two zero pitch from Whitney. Shot into the Georgia Southern dugout. Everybody able to clear out of the way. In the air, deep center field going back is Miller. He finds a spot right before the warning track to make the grab, one down. Humidity must be coming back. Ball's not carrying like it was. <laughs> Hit that ball, driving back. I say it's not carrying very much. It's a ball out to dead center field on a warning track. <laughs> The 1-0 pitch. Outside now, 2-0. Piercy takes a strike, now 2-1. Three balls and a strike now to Piercy. Whitney trying to finish this top of the ninth off so his buddies can get back there and bat here in the bottom of the ninth and try to make up this deficit. If he can hold them right here, Georgia Southern has a really good shot. It's currently 98 degrees with a heat index of 102. Humidity at 32%. But what a difference the shade makes. That lack of humidity, right? As they say out west, it's a dry heat. <laughs> if it's a dry heat, why am I sweating? <laughs> Three balls and two strikes to Piercy. One down here, top of the ninth. Again, tap foul. Nine runs, nine hits, one error, nine left on for the Chanticleers. Seven runs, ten hits, two errors, and seven left on for the Eagles. Got him. Second strikeout for Whitney, now two down here in the ninth. Whitney bearing down. Looked like took something off of that pitch. One more out here, gets his team back in the dugout with one more chance to get those runs on the board. And Nick Lucky at the plate. Base hit. 
Lucky with his second hit of the game. And another record for Coastal Carolina as they have set the record for total number of hits in the Sun Belt Tournament. Look at that. Up and down the lineup, doesn't matter. Into one spot, the nine spot. 10 total hits here today. And Corey Wood batting. Shanta clears 32 and eight this season when they score at least six runs. They are eight and two all time in the Sun Belt Tournament. The last three seasons, their only loss in 2017 when they were knocked out by Texas State, the number eight seed, and when it was a single elimination tournament because of the weather. And then on Wednesday in the opening game for them here in this tournament when they were walked off by UT Arlington. Boy, it is a grind to come back in that loser's bracket. No doubt this is their sixth game of the tournament, just the fourth for Georgia Southern. Yet, here they are, three outs away with a chance to win it. In the last three games, too, on the field, 10 hours yesterday in the sun. Today, a grind now. We're coming up on four hours in about nine minutes for this game. one pitch in there for a strike 0 and 2 now to Wood from Whitney. Big question will be, can the Coastal bullpen hold this two-run lead when they get the ball in the bottom of the ninth? They've been good for the last seven innings, that is. Just one run since that five-run fifth or five-run second for Georgia Southern. Runner goes, out at second. Avant throws out Lucky, trying to steal, and that gets the Eagles back in the dugout to grab the bats. They'll try to rally and win this thing, or at least tie it. 